hey, want to watch me break things? Come to Kind of Funny Live 3. Go to kindoffunny.com forward slash KFL3. That's the site. This episode of the Kind of Funny Games cast is brought to you by Sherry's Berries. Mother's Day is coming up, and Sherry's Berries is offering huge, freshly dipped strawberries starting at $19.99 plus shipping. And right now, you can double the berries for just $10 more. Pick your delivery date, and those berries are guaranteed to arrive fresh and delicious or your money back. I got these berries for Gia once, and if I'm lying, I'm dying. I ate all of them, and I don't even regret it. They were good. They were damn good. She was pretty bummed, but she was happy. I was happy. And that's really all that matters at the end of the day. Anyways, the only way to get this amazing berries deal starting at just $19.99 is to visit berries.com. You click on the microphone in the top right corner and use the code KF games. That's B E R R I E S.com and the code KF games. You click on the mic. This amazing deal won't last long. And mother's day is right around the corner. So make your mama proud order now. Final topic of the day. As always, it's brought to you by you. You can go to kindoffunny.com slash gamescast topic and leave your questions just like all these beautiful people did. It's from John B. X32. John B. X32. Xbox really needs a big new exclusive. If you were in charge of making that happen, what kind of game would it be? What would it be about? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> It's interesting because you look at the exclusive game right mm -hmm. now, right? Nintendo in its own little fucking world. It'll always be there. It's going to have its IP and it is what it is. But when you look at Xbox versus PlayStation, we've discussed the exclusive thing death at this point. Sure. Where it's like, all right, PlayStation's very much succeeding in its exclusives. Mm -hmm. Xbox is not doing so well. This it, year has been PlayStation, PlayStation, yep, PlayStation. Yep. Like, and it's like it's Xbox crazy. seems like it, it's it's going to hit eventually, but whatever. And it Maybe. Busted its load a little bit like the last couple of years with it's big guys Scale with, with uh, well, yeah. And like, canceling all exclusives it's had. Halo 5 came out. Master Chief Collection before that. Gears. It's like, that. those are kind of their, their big franchises. So it's like, all right. Is Forza Horizon answer, is very good. And then Forza. Yeah. Is there an, another need for a shooter? No. Don't think so. Is it a big RPG? I don't even know like what Well, if the question the is like, be. if I can have any any game, that my answer to this question has always been that I would make a Justice League game that's just like Occam. Like I would make a Justice League game. So there's tons of them. We're in a big old city. There's a, you okay? Yes, you're just saying all the right things. Keep going. <laughs> it's like much bigger scale than a regular Occam game, but that's the tone that I would want, right? And that's the thing I've always said. Does it make sense as an Xbox exclusive? Probably not. So for them to fill a gap, I think they need an, an RPG. See, I, I don't know, man. I, I would argue that they do. I think that does fill the gap because I think here's the thing it's with not an open wall either. Here's what the well, I mean, look at Horizon, right, and all that stuff. The yeah. the thing I think it's pretty clear that Xbox has been trying to chase is the adult gamer who would be story driven and like, hey, we don't have an Uncharted. I think esports too. Sure, but I think right now in terms of how to catch up to PlayStation, right? Like, sure. what does PlayStation do so well? The exclusives and stories that matter, uh, Uncharted, Horizon, mm. being excited for Detroit, right? And you see Xbox go like, all right, cool. We're going to get Tomb Raider's exclusivity. But Tomb Raider comes with so much baggage, at least you know for a year, so much baggage, it doesn't move the units. And then when it comes to PlayStation, it doesn't do as well, and everybody's getting fucked in that deal, yeah. right? And then you're like, all right, cool. Then what we want to do is we'll make our own. Let's get Quantum Break. Quantum Break comes out and just doesn't perform well because it's still very much anchored in old Xbox of like, no, no, it's it's the melding of TV and games. And everybody's like, no. Nah. Yeah, I did. I actually really liked it. I liked it a lot too. But, but I it, understand why it didn't sell. It was sent out to die because yeah. it was like, is it a TV show? Is it a game? You'll find out. And then we're all like, we hate TV. And they're <laughs> like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Stop with the goddamn gimmicks. Yeah, exactly. But it was cool and it was interesting and different, but whatever. Like I think sitting down and being like, Taking a page from Sony and being like, all right, cool, you have Spider-Man, we're doing this. And mm -hmm. the fact that True. Marvel is already playing ball that way and doing all these different things and letting Spider-Man be exclusive. And we talked about it before, right? Of like, well, what does it mean for the other games they're working on in Avengers yeah. and this and that? And I think we did look at it up. The Marvel DC thing could be interesting there. Yeah. yeah. But, I kind of like that. Yeah. And that would be fun. Yeah. If you were like, if it, of course, it is the normal thing being, you know, DC fanboy number one of like, oh, Justice League game. I hope it's not made by Zack Snyder. You know what I mean? Like that kind of shit. There'd be all shit talking. But if it came out and it was fucking awesome. And Rocksteady it was. makes it. Yeah, it, I mean, that's... Everything's fine. Can you fucking imagine mm. in 83? They're like, all right, cool. Yeah, Rocksteady's making the Justice League That's literally that's been my cute. answer to that question for the last, like, decade, I think. It's that, been like, this is the game that you make. And that's the thing, is it because then you're taking what 
movies are doing and what they're doing where they're ta- uh, you know what I love about Marvel is the fact that like all right cool tell tell your greatest stories take this yeah. uh, Square you guys are good with a whole bunch of shit here you go make this Avengers game rumored to be making another Guardians game like let, let's just take our properties and not try to do them in house and do them mediocre let's go find the best studios to partner with and make them make stuff yeah. I mean I love Fable uh, like the first Fable game was one of my favorite games like I love that game so much so it's like that's a property that doesn't exist anymore that almost filled a gap and then it was open world it was RPG but one thing that I, I think like is definitely missing is a Bloodborne or a Neo. Like, sure, mm. Xbox has Dark Souls as well, but like if there was a game like that, that's what I wanted Scalebound to be, mm. and that game's been canceled. So, yeah. I don't know. There's a ton of gaps right now. I do think that Halo and Gears are incredible franchises. I'm super attached to those franchises, and I love those games. Uh, but they're definitely not enough to carry. Yeah, console. they've shown that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, and that was I think a wake up call to Xbox in a lot of ways of like, well, we have these, these sell, these are who our gamers are, and I do think that that's true. But I think the gamers have grown up in a lot of ways. Yeah, mm. where it's like just chainsaws and fucking Master Chief aren't enough right now. Yeah, I think it needs a, a an answer to Uncharted. Like it needs a triple A. Yeah, this is a movie game and not experience that that's not Tomb Raider yeah. either. Like and even like Tomb Raider is great, but it's like you need something that is like a Naughty Dog game. You know, yeah. and it's like I don't think there's anybody necessarily that can can do that. I mean, too, and like this is I, we I, we've had this discussion on this show, right? Avengers hasn't announced platforms, correct? Nope, it mm-hmm. hasn't. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Nope. And that's where it comes back is I wouldn't put that past them of like this is their answer. Like, okay, Sony got that, we're taking that, and this is and it would be the same thing, but it would be the Chris, you know, Crystal Dynamics and we're working on it, right? Of being like, all right, here's our game, and this is what it is, and it's the same thing as Tomb Raider, though. In the argument, if they could just come out and be like, no, this is exclusive to this platform. It is Period. not. Yeah, it's exactly. Because that's what killed Tomb Raider every time was yeah. like, E3, here it is. And then an hour later, E3, you're like, well, they're going back and forth and they're using this. And it's like, when PlayStation's already selling so much better, why would I jump over to buy an Xbox when I know yeah. I'm eventually going to get that game? And then a lot of people really just didn't do it. And they yeah. were like, oh, I'll buy it when it comes to PlayStation. And then they forgot. Oh, what a surprise. It. There's a million games coming out a year later yeah. that look better or do this or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. This one comes from Bongos for Kevin. Bongos for Kev Dog. Kev Dog, what you playing over there on that Switch? Zelda. Zelda, all right. I don't know why he shook his head at Bongos. No, oh, he doesn't want to be Bongo. Like There's a history here. At one point, uh, Nick pulled up Kevin's shirt Twice and uh, bongoed on his belly. Uh-huh. And it's been a. Uh, we did it for good? charity. We did it for charity. It's for charity. That's good. I saved it for charity. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Raising a lot of money. Bongos for kids. Raising that money. Yeah. Um, should I get a PlayStation VR or a Nintendo Switch? Oh dang! Look at the library of games and Switch. Just get the Switch. Yeah, I mean it's it's I, the argument for any any time anything like this comes up. What do you want to play? I, mean, I hate these questions. I hate it when people ask me this stuff because I'm like I cannot tell you what your preference is. Yep. I don't know what you prefer. Uh, if you travel a lot, get the Switch. Uh, if you probably prefer shorter experiences that you are more likely to play by yourself, maybe get PlayStation VR. But there's also like VR is pretty rad. Like, if, if you happen to really like that tech and you haven't tried it, PSVR is a great way to do that. It's very easy. Yeah. Um, if you can find one. You can't yeah. find a Switch either, so there's that. There's that. And I feel, but I feel like it's that thing where a year ago we would have been more bu- bullish the other way, or one way or the other. Whereas I feel like now that both Switch and VR are out, I feel like... One's getting support, the other VR is right going now. down, and it feels like Switch is yeah. coming up. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I also think that... Like, I mean, I love... PSVR, I didn't buy one, and I had all the experience that I need playing yeah. your guys's. You sure. know, and it's yeah, like yeah. I'm a little bit lucky that I work in the industry and have all my friends have 100%. it. But it's just like I'm sure you could find somebody if you really wanted to play that would let you borrow it for a weekend. Yeah, you're right. They probably own all five awesome experiences yeah. that you can do. Do them all, and then you're done. It's you pretty know? easy to say that you'll get more time out of Switch than you would out of PSVR just with Zelda alone. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's Zelda's the thing is cheating. And it's the same. <laughs> I mean, it's you know Vita fanboy number one or two at least yeah, over here with <laughs> Switch, right? Like. It's everything I love about the Vita without the pitfall of the Vita that at no point Nintendo can be like, you Not know what? Everything you love. You know, trophies, trophies I know. But it, I, it, for the most important part, right? But Nintendo can't say, you know what? We're not going to make AAA games for it anymore. Yeah. They're making AAA games for this. I'm getting Odyssey. I'm playing Card. I love Zelda. And then I have Mr. Shifty in there, that Tumbleweed game, Tumble Seed game. I can't remember the name of it. Tumble Seed. Tumble Seed. Yeah. I mean, in Graceful Explosion Machine. Like, mm-hmm. there's enough reasons right now I feel that, that it's why it's my most played system at the moment and why it's with me mm-hmm. at all times. Mr. Shifty. Yeah. Did you beat it? No. Okay. What did you think? I enjoyed what I played early on. I mean, it's it's rough around the edges. Yeah, it's pretty. It chugs rough. at times. Yeah, yeah. It's it's much cooler of an idea than it is. Sure, it's not actually, optimized. It doesn't. Yeah, feel it optimized. doesn't feel optimized. That's yeah. a good way to put but it. But I enjoy it's it. A fun game, really. It's Kevin, cool, you beat it, right? Yeah. What did you think, Big Kev Dog? Hitting a million buttons. He has mic turned on. I'm gonna turn a little webcam here in a second. You know, I'm is. actually turning off your mics when I do that. Oh, oh really? So nobody morning. can hear us. Well, no, for the morning show. 
Oh. Those mics are on. It's like, I'm off. Uh, I loved, I loved Mr. Shifty. What, what, what am I doing? I just like how us talking to you feels. It, you like played off like we're inconveniencing you. <laughs> You're like, oh, well, I was in the middle of something. Switch down. Good. I'm glad you liked All it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that was that. The ending was. It gets so hard, and it does have a lot of like glitching. Yeah. Where your like characters just kind of like the whole screen freezes. Oh, really? And then all of a sudden you, you've jumped a little bit, and it's like, all right, whatever. But eventually you kind of figure out how, when that's gonna happen. When there's just too much. The going telltale on. problem. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> you just accept mm. it. Andy, what do you think of Mr. Shift? Get in there and talk in that microphone, big Andy Cortez. Oh my God! Why are you? Shut up, dude. Seriously, uh, I really doing? like it. I like it a lot. Good. All right. Thanks, Andy. Look Great at these show. motherfuckers. Look, look how cute they are. <laughs> I've never said this phrase before in my life, but I think I ship you. Oh my yes. god. Yes. Big Kev Dog and Andy Cortez. Yeah. Ooh, it's good. It's getting hot. Aww. Some cute boys. Damn. I like. What this. do you I got like against bongos, man? Come on. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Brian Bishar Sharon says, "Who's the best video game in-game DJ?" This was a Alana question. I don't Really know, know of many. She's what's your DJ name? Is your DJ DJ Alana or DJ Charles I, I literally let the venue choose. So I'm like, oh, whatever you want, just, fam. Just do it. Yeah. Go. I thought about going with Alana Zod for a while because I mm. feel like that's a cool DJ name, but it's a lot of effort. Like, I don't know. I'm yeah. just like, whatever the fuck you want. Okay. People are like, what okay. kind of genre do you DJ? I'm like, whatever the fuck they ask for. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I'll play Queen if you want. It's fine. Kevin um the answer to that, I'm just can I just say Child of Eden, just the whole game? The game? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shout out to that. Yeah. Did you play DJ Hero too, or DJ Hero? Why did I jump to two? Yes. Anyways, I have played DJ Hero. What'd you think? Uh, As like a DJ, completely inaccurate, but sure. very fun. Yeah, right. That was it's not even remotely accurate. Yeah. yeah, DJ Hero for me, I was so so heartbroken by it. Really, I love rhythm games. Yeah, mm -hmm. Amplitude, obviously, fucking greatest of all time. And Rock DJ Man. Hero was because I'm like, I'm like, all right, this is gonna be the closest thing to that that I'm gonna get. And it's just something about the mechanics of it. I'm like, eh, this yeah. is just a broke ass. Like, yeah, it's it not wasn't even Beat Mania even. Like, Beat Mania was awesome. And then that shit, I'm like, eh, The sound shapes is so good. Oh, oh sound yeah. shapes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Good call. Good call. Double platinum. All right. Now, now here is a very hard hitting question uh -huh. from uh, Moore Saiyan. Does Alana think Armored Core can be revitalized with a new gameplay mechanic? I think Armored Core can be revitalized anyway. Like, I really like those games. We haven't had a mech game in a while. It oh, happened! Shit. Oh my god! Holy fucking shit! It's been 118 episodes, and it's finally happened. I'm so we confused. have a guest on the show that has played Armored Core. This dude. Everyone just started yelling at me, Andy. This dude. <laughs> What's happening? Has sent in a question. Every time I have a guest, uh -huh. he sends in. A, a question, question about Armored Core? Core. No way. And no one ever has no, really like anything Armored to say. That's cool. Oh, the floor is yours. Go. What? What? I mean, Armored Core. It's just, been a really we all long yelled over your answer. What would you do it's to revive? It's been a long time since we've had an Armored Core game slash any good mech game. I think you, you don't need to revitalize it with a gameplay mechanic. I think that exists in this day. You just make one. Well, there you go. I don't know what you're going to ask you, from now on. Yeah. This is it. History has been made. <laughs> I can't believe it. you guys it. not that played Armored Core? No, I, I think they're. I think I honestly might have reviewed one for IGN back in the day when they were like review everything. I don't know anything about it. Review it. All right, but I don't. You know, yeah, fun. A lot of, a lot of. So here's here's a lot of Alana questions here. Mm -hmm. Alan Martinez says, "When did you decide to go into the game press? A specific game? Did someone really inspire you to cover video games? And was IGN your dream?" So um, I think my answer to this is very similar to most other people's, and then it was a complete accident. Uh, I was working in this terrible job in a call center, which I fucking hated. So naturally, I was looking for jobs elsewhere. And uh, I'd always loved writing. I'd always loved games. And I just saw a listing for a volunteer news writer for a games website. And I was like, I totally do that in my spare time. So I started doing that and then was like, this is the best thing. And then just worked my way up to doing it full time. So it wasn't like a decision I made. It was like a job listing I saw and was like, hmm, I could maybe do this. And that was like five years ago in May. I think my first article was published May 6th. So like kind of soon. Um, what, was it? what was the other half of that question? Was IGN the dream? I wanted to work at a place like IGN or GameSpot uh, for sure. And I wouldn't say like that I had that like one goal, but it was definitely I wanted to work in the US because the industry is so much bigger here and there's mm -hmm. kind of a ceiling in Australia. Um, so it was definitely like one of the bigger websites, but it wasn't IGN specifically. I'm pretty happy though. though. Yeah. And speaking <laughs> of IGN, Michael mm -hmm. Gulliver wants to know, what are the expectations versus reality of working at IGN? Uh, you work constantly and you're very tired. No, it's it's a super fun place to work. I love everyone I work with. Um, it's no, like that can't be true. Well, almost. Fran. You work with Fran. Fran, right? I like Fran. the third. 
You're allowed to like a friend outside of work, but at work, yeah. oh, no, 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 worst. No. Well, I'm only well. just starting on the video, too. Oh, well, yeah, you'll yeah, learn. So you'll you learn. gotta. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, we should have a meeting about this. Love I'm out of town for four months. <laughs> <Yeah>. Damn it, <laughs> Fran. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how many times I've heard that exact thing, but I've never <laughs> experienced it myself. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you definitely work way harder than even I would have thought. And it's also, like, one thing that I, I always want to talk about is... IGN takes ethics way more fucking seriously than I ever would have expected before working there because I was one of those teenagers who made fun of IGN because they were the cool kid to make fun of. And uh, working there now is like, you know, I've worked for the BBC, I worked for the ABC, those like actual mainstream news organizations who didn't take game reviews or games journalism as seriously as IGN sure. does. So like that's something that I think that like really needs to, to be spoken about. And like when we do those ranking lists or game of the year lists, people are in a room fucking arguing. Oh, people yeah. are yelling. People are angry at each other. At no point is this like, maybe they'll give us some money. Let's, let's just like email Activision, see what happens there. Not a thing. And that's like something that I didn't expect to be as serious as it was. But I like it. Graham Hughes wants to know, which Switch cartridge tastes the best? I assume they all taste best bad i have tasted two of them it was uh zelda and skylanders i was drunk that's my excuse and uh they were both equally terrible i also actually speaking of steve Gaynor, tried to make him taste one i tried very hard it's sure. like i have this recorded because i was drunk and i was very rude about it he didn't do it mm. he was like i'm mm. not doing that i was like steve lick it he didn't he didn't do he it. said the same thing when i said put a platinum trophy and gone home it's so, like i'm not doing it yeah like, you're a piece of and shit. then did you say steve lick, lick it, it. Yeah, I did. But that was, we're that talking go? about something different. Uh, his next game's an Xbox PC exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> George Alexander wants to know, how hard is it to juggle IGN content and your own YouTube channel? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough. Like, I work late a lot of the time, and the biggest problem I have is that I live with a bunch of uh, housemates who, when I get home at, like, 10 p.m. at night after work and going to the gym, and then I, I can't make a video because it would be super rude because I would keep all my housemates up. So that is, like, the biggest problem is, is finding the time. It's also, like, it's very hard for me to respond to things. Like, I make videos about lifestyle shit or current news like i did a pepsi ad reaction video which was like okay i know i have to do this right now but how the fuck do i find the time to do that mm -hmm. it's really hard to respond to things immediately but um yeah i don't know I, I block out time i plan things literally months in advance i have the the youtube videos i plan on making for probably the next year in a list and i just sort of reorder them all the time it's just like i have to be very organized about how it. many videos you put out a week just one okay I usually like because i have to be flexible on times i can't publish like at a certain amount. I try and do every five days. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's more, sometimes it's less. So gotcha. Yeah. They, I think uh, being more on point on dates would probably work better. But just with the way that my schedule is and traveling so much, I can't. Oh, yeah, so totally. I do what I can. Yeah. yeah. You're doing it well. Thank you. Gareth McCrudden says, what are games you've never played slash wanted to play because they weren't available in Australia? Mm. Um, I think uh, games being banned in Australia is exaggerated and that it doesn't when you when you live there you're angry about the news but then you seem to just end up getting access to everything really easily anyway so it's not really a thing the only thing that i really wanted was i think left for dead 2 was originally censored in australia mm. and i really wanted the uncensored version that was the so big just, one yeah they they shot and disappeared or became yes, flowers the, or some the, shit like that that would have been nicer no the was, bodies uh, disappeared okay, right. um which like i hated so i just played the uncensored version not yeah. a way to play it but then on the flip side um south park the stick of truth is also censored but i think the way they censored it is funnier than the thing they censored mm. so it's like basically someone i think in the u.s version presses a button and then randy marsh just gets a dildo up his butt i think that's what happens he gets probed he gets probed in the alien ship right yeah, yeah. something goes up his butt yes, either way that, yes but in the australian version it just cuts to a picture of a kangaroo crying with like a faint didgeridoo sound and it's like australia you fucked up again <laughs> like we're not allowed to show you this because you're a bunch of pussies and i like I, every time That's it would really cut to that i was That's like this really is way funny. better than the actual probing it was pretty good usually is yeah. usually is yeah well Lana, thank you very much for joining us My today pleasure. this has been a very fun episode where can people find you uh i am on all of the social medias at charlanazad including patreon yeah, patreon.com slash charlanazard. Yeah. yeah. I keep it consistent. Nice there job. You go. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. You should support her. She's cool. She's doing cool stuff. Thank you. Support her at IG as well. All the places. Don't support Fran. Yeah, don't support Fran. Never forgive Never the support. 7 well. 9. Double dash. Yeah. You're fucking kidding there you me, with Fran. The well. There you go with the well. You're learning. <laughs> Till next time. I love you. Well, thank you for watching that. You can click right there to subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny games. You can click right there to subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny. You can support us on Patreon, get a lot of things early, and you can click right here for some fucking magic.